asking this question because honestly it is the very reason that muslims in the mainstream community will try to justify homophobia it's by using the story of lut alayhi salam and these patriarchal interpretations of the quran to justify homophobia and i know i'm about to get a lot of shit for what i'm gonna say right now but you know what i don't really care because it's not about the mainstream muslim community it's about the queer muslims who have literally been exiled and told that they are literally haram and that their existence is haram because people use the story of loot to justify the story of Lut alayhi salam is actually about rape. Surprise, surprise. It's about men raping other men. It's about acquiring power. It's about acquiring domination. It's about sexual violence and sexual assault. It's about men raping other men and has absolutely nothing to do with being gay. No People today have reinterpreted the traditional Islamic understanding around homosexuality and rulings to do with homosexual acts. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah is a story about a town that was doing horrible acts, acts of rape, acts of incest, not a condemnation of same gender loving relationships. It wasn't homosexuality that these people were involved in, it was acts of rape. How is this aggressive sexual assault in any way or form analogous? To the legitimate human need for intimacy, affection, and companionship for LGBTQ Muslims. There is absolutely no connection, there is absolutely no analogy here. Can we elaborate on this in light of the conversation? Yeah, so this is another example where you have certain people who have already accepted a certain preset notion ID. And then they come to the Quran and Sunnah with that framework, with their ID, and they try to place that ID into the Quran rather than actually taking the Qur'an for what it is. The Qur'an itself says, what does the Qur'an say? The Qur'an says, Lot was speaking to his people. And he says to his people, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ Verily you people, you go to males out of lust, rather than going to females. So the general argument that is made by these people who want to reinterpret this verse, they say that this verse is referring to rape. That these men were going to other men and raping them. It wasn't homosexuality that these people were involved in. It was acts of rape. This, this is their reinterpretation. Mm -hmm. We can clearly see that if it's saying that men shouldn't be raping other men, but the rest of the verse says that you go to males out of lust instead of out of females. So if it is not okay to rape men, then does it become okay to rape women? Of course not. According to their reinterpretation, if you follow their logic, then it should be allowed to rape women. Which is definitely not the case. So there's something there that is allowed between a male and a female, which isn't allowed between a male and, a, and another male. So it can't be rape, because rape isn't allowed between a male and a female. Mm. So these type of arguments, you can clearly see that they have preset notions, preconceived ideas. And I want to make and stress the point that what we are talking about here, when we criticize or when the verse criticizes males going to another male, what we're criticizing is not your orientation, your sexual orientation. Rather, we are criticizing you acting upon that sexual orientation in, in any way. Islam, the Quran, our tradition, without any difference of opinion, has, has agreed upon that you acting upon your sexual orientation, the actual act of going to um, another male out, out of lust, are forbidden, without any disagreement. As for the orientation in and of itself, because it's inv involuntary, then the Sharia has nothing to say. It is not forbidden. It's something out of your control. And you as a person needs to control this inclination. Okay, I just wanted to add something here that I disagree with the Sheikh actually and with a lot of the scholars today who are saying that the inclination itself is not haram. Okay, um, we have to understand that there's a difference definitely with the Sharia between the action and the desire to do something. Here at this point, the issue of homosexuality, I think we need to understand a major, major point. It has nothing to do with the genes. It has nothing to do with no control. When we look at Islam, do we work on only controlling our actions or also our intentions? As the Prophet said, Hadith Omar Khattab. So it's about working on yourself to purify those thoughts, 
Because what happens is when you say something like this, right, mashallah, I'm sure that maybe he didn't word it properly. I don't, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what he means. Also, he's trying to be very careful, obviously, from a legal perspective, that he doesn't get in trouble. So he's condemning the action, but he's not condemning the, the internal feeling, right? No, both are condemned. Because in Islam, it's both the inside and the outside that has to be worked on, right? And that's why tazkiyat nafs, you know, and protecting yourself and purifying your nafs and so on is so important. And it deals in this aspect of, of you know, LGBT as well. So a human being has to work really hard to remove that from themselves, to remove those thoughts through purification, through, uh, you know, their, their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so when, we, when some shifts will say like, well, yeah, the action is condemned. He cannot, he cannot um, you know, stop the action. He has to control the action. But what about what's inside? That's what he has to control because that's where the action comes from. So if he's just like, okay, you have to control yourself and never act upon that. Well, yeah, you know, so we're not condemning the, 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 the orientation itself. We're condemning the action. No, we're condemning the orientation as well because it's not ge genetic. Allah didn't create you like this. Okay, you got messed up because of society, because of trauma in your, in your you know, young age or exposure to pornography and all these things. Because do you think, come on, let's see, let's, let's be honest for a second. All ulama and all sheikhs and all the people and all the doctors and everyone, everyone who's a Muslim and who's talking like this. Because we're scared, of course, what repercussions might take place in our countries uh, because of saying stuff like that. But we're responsible men. These people, when you tell them, yeah, control your action, we're condemning the action, but not the orientation. They'll be like, oh, okay, so there's nothing wrong with me. No, actually, it's already from you, from the inside, that the problem is. So that's what you have to work on. Not the action is, no doubt. But it's like, it's like you're going to say, well, you know, okay. and that's the process I'm talked about intention. As the process I'm talked about, what happens when a thought, what happens, if, how it materializes. If you allow for the shaitan and these kind of feelings inside of you, your orientation to take over you. Right? So actually I believe that many Imams and uh, people who are, of course, pushed, sadly, and pressured to be politically correct, will say the wrong thing, actually. There's, no, we are condemning the orientation and the action. The inside, the tazkiyah to nafs, okay? قَدَ أَفْلَى مَنْ زَكَّاهَ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَ قَدَ أَفْلَى مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَدَكَ رَسْمُ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Right? Allah SWT talks about the soul. He who purifies, who works at it. He will succeed, and he who doesn't corrupts it, he will fail. So, what did the scholars say about this? You know, no, the Sharia is not silent. I'm so sorry, but the Sheikh has made a mistake. The Sharia is not silent whatsoever about the orientation and the inside. It's not silence. There's a lot that the Prophet said, and you know, you look into the books of Teskia, Teskia to Nafs, Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ghazali, whoever you want. Okay, you will find this. Okay, talking about the desires and the inside. That's where it works on, not about the action. Because the action, you think if someone tells you, well, man, you know, I understand that inside you feel like this, and we don't condemn you because this is the way you are. You cannot control it, right? This is an orientation that's innate. It's in you. <laughs> and, but we expect you to control your action. Yeah, really. You think he's going to control his action? He's going to say, oh, see? So the sheikh understands that it's not, you know, it's, it's just that's who I am. And then obviously you're going to be like, but I can't control myself. This is how I am in nature. How can you tell a fish not to swim in the sea? You're a fish. And you're telling them, no, no, just control yourself from swimming in the sea. Or from being in water. No. So I believe preachers need to be careful with this. Okay, You can read a book called My Genes Made Me Do It. It talks about the, the research around this issue and the so-called propaganda that has been pushed to convince even Muslims. Imams and so on, and I know that there's a lot of politically correctness, political correctness that has been pressured on them. As a counselor, I deal with homosexuals, people, Muslims, who, who, but there's a difference. They know that's wrong. The inside is wrong and the outside is wrong as well. They know that and they accept and they want to fix it, all right? But when you are telling someone, hey, your inside is your inside, you know, you, you can't do anything about it. We're not condemning your intention. Don't act. We're condemning the action. Come on, does it work? Doesn't work.